أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to the final episode in this series in the holy month of Ramadan in which we have been discussing the most beautiful story in the holy Quran, the story of Yusuf, peace be upon him. Throughout this series we've been looking at different moral principles which we have been able to extrapolate from this story, from this chapter and look at how we can implement it in a practical manner. We looked at how the brothers of Yusuf had certain vices within them. We looked at how these vices eat away one's faith and how we must remain away from them. We also began to understand the relationship between parent and child and child and parent, the duties of a parent to their child and some of the requirements that a child has to their parents as well. We looked at tests and tribulations and we looked at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests those whom He loves. Not because he wants to put them through difficulty, but because he wants to increase their capacity and their vessel. And this can only be done through a difficult nurturing. Nurturing. Whenever you want to expand something, you need to heat it. If your ring is too small and it needs to be expanded, you need to heat it in order to push it out, in order to expand it that much more. That's exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does with us. In order to increase our capacity, he has to put us through certain difficulties, trials and tests. Not because He doesn't love us, rather the complete opposite. Because He loves us, He puts us through these tests, gives us the tools to pass them, so that He can give us even more after we come through them. We also looked at how there are certain desires that man has, desires which are good. The desire of anger, the desire of the opposite gender, the desire for wealth. These are all good desires, the desires of imagination. However, they all have to be controlled and only used when they need to be used. If these desires control man, then naturally man becomes worse off than the animals. As the famous hadith says, that angels have been created with an intellect and no desire. Animals have been created with desire and no intellect. But man has been created with both. So if man's desires govern his intellect, he becomes worse off than the animals. And if his intellect governs his desires, then he becomes even greater than the angels. We looked at how the first sin committed by Satan was the same sin that the brothers of Yusuf committed. And although its pleasure was short-lived, that Satan didn't do sajda and he felt great in that, the actual effect and the negative effect that came from that sin is everlasting. We then looked at how when Yusuf was in the prison, how he preferred and prioritized God over everything else. This is a principle that you and I need to inculcate on a regular basis to make it part and parcel of us. That God will be my priority above everything else. Even when it comes to one's parents, is it not true that when one's parents tell them to disobey God, then they should disobey their parents and listen to God? at other times to obey one's parents. But there comes a time when if a parent tries to put themselves on the same level and pedestal as God, then obviously God needs to be given precedence. In everything that we do, in our relationship with our children, with our spouse, when we go to work, when we play, whatever we may be doing, God has to be the priority. And we can implement this in small methods. For example, praying salah on time. This will prove to us and prove to God that we prioritize him over everything else. The Ahlul Bayt السلام, used to say, Ma khuliqna lil-la'ib. We have not been created to play in this world. This world is short-lived, 70, 80, 90 years. That's not a long time. Ask somebody who's in their 50s whether or not life has passed and they'll tell you that it's just gone by them. Yes, those children who are young look forward to growing up, 
Ask the elders. They won't want the days to pass because they know they're coming to the end of their time. So we remind ourselves that our time is coming to an end. We don't know when death will come about. And so every moment that we have been blessed with, we need to take advantage of it and we need to make sure we use it in the best fashion. We came to the section where Yusuf was in prison and Yusuf did not accept to come out of the prison when the king summoned him, except that the king would now ask the ladies as to what happened regarding that incident when they cut their fingers off. This is where Zuleikha also was called and she made it clear that it is Yusuf that has been truthful and it is I who try to seduce him. Verse number 52. Many Mufassirin say that this verse is mentioned by Yusuf. However, chronologically it doesn't sit well because Yusuf is still in prison. So he's not able to say this to the public. This would have been Zuleikha talking as well as the next verse. Zulaikha therefore mentions I am making mention that he is the one who is truthful. Why? Zulaikha says so that he, Yusuf, should know that I did not betray him during his absence. That just because he's in prison and he can't speak for himself, that I'm not going to betray him and say that he attacked me. No, I'm going to say the truth. It's clear here that something has changed in Zulaikha now. Now she wants to say the truth. Now she's willing to stand up and say the truth as to what happened in order to clear Yusuf's reputation as well. She says, I am saying this so that he should know that I did not betray him during his absence. And she bears witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not guide and bring about the plans of those who are deceiving. Then the most profound statement comes about. And she says, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي I do not say that I'm free from my lower self. إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءُ إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي This lower self that everybody has, this nafs al-ammara, it's calling towards evil, it's attracted towards evil, it wants play, it wants relaxation, it wants to be lazy. It doesn't want to work for the sake of God, it doesn't want to do ibadah, it doesn't want to obey God and worship Him. It wants to do everything that it wants, which is evil and ill. She says, I am not free from this soul, this soul that is calling towards evil. Illa ma rahima rabbi, except if my Lord has mercy on me. Inna rabbi ghafoorur rahim. And she bears witness that the Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is all forgiving and all merciful. Now, the king calls upon Yusuf and asks for him to be released, to be brought to him. And he says, this is the king, meaning this is not the Aziz, this is not the husband of Zuleikha. This is a king above the Aziz, somebody who has the greatest authority in the palace. He calls out Yusuf after understanding what has happened now, that Yusuf's reputation is pure and clean and he did not wrong anyone. Rather, it was the ladies who wronged him. He says, I will keep him for myself. I will use him for myself in the palace because I found him to be an honorable individual and an individual who is very faithful. It is here now that the plan of Allah unfolds and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks after Yusuf in a manner in which he has taken him from the pits of the well and is now going to make him the head of the treasury. Of course, as you know, the interpretation of the dream of the king is that seven years will come where they will flourish in their harvest and seven years of difficulty will come. And this is where Yusuf says, make me the head of the treasury, I will be able to distribute accordingly and in a just fashion. I'd like us to move to verse number 97. Now the brothers of Yusuf come to their father after having come to Egypt now, being sent back to the father and now coming again. Yaqub says, it's as if I can perceive Yusuf is here. Yaqub is blind by this time, out of crying because of the separation that he's had with Yusuf. His old age as well. He wants Yusuf and now he perceives Yusuf. He tells the brothers, paraphrasing, that it's as if I can sense Yusuf is here. Or do you think that this is my ill judgment? And they say, you're, no, you're in error, you're an old man. And as soon as the shirt of Yusuf is brought, and he wipes it on his eyes, he's given eyesight again, and he tells them that, is this not my clear judgment? Now they understand that this is Yusuf. And so now the brothers understand that the truth has come to surface. This is what Allah revealed to Yusuf in the well. 
when Allah says that we reveal unto Yusuf that you will inform them of this action of theirs one day whilst they are unaware. They were unaware that this was Yusuf when Yusuf placed uh, the, the goblet into the sack of Benjamin. They were unaware but now they've become aware that this was Yusuf. So what do they do? They do tawassul. They do tawassul with their own father. They tell Yaqub, please ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our forgiveness. Turn to Allah, ask him to forgive us. And Yaqub says, I shall turn to my Lord, I shall ask him for forgiveness. Innahu huwa al ghafoorur rahim Why? Because he's all forgiving and all merciful. Before we continue here, did you, did you notice how despite everything they have done to Yaqub, Yaqub doesn't turn around and say, I'm not going to ask for your forgiveness. Yaqub doesn't say you are at fault. Yaqub doesn't say, how dare you speak to me? I want to banish you. I want to cut you off. None of this is mentioned. Do you see how the hadith of the Ahlul Bayt mentions, تَخَلَّقُوا بِأَخْلَاقِ اللَّهِ Personify the characteristics and the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is al ghafar Allah is the all-forgiving. You and I should also be forgiving. This father forgives the, ch the ch children straight away. He actually asks Allah and does tawassul for them that Allah should forgive him. Allah should forgive all of the children. The children clearly have opened their eyes now, the brothers. They want to return back to Allah. They've understood their error. فَلَمَّا دَخَلُوا عَلَىٰ يُوسُفَ Now the brothers and the mother and the father enter into the presence of Yusuf. Yusuf embraces them, Yusuf greets them and elevates them and puts them on a high stool. He gives the father and the mother a great station, a great place to sit in the majlis. It's a respectful position. Many have mentioned this misconception again that the Nubuwa was removed from Yusuf because when he met his father, he was on a horse and his father was walking and he didn't come down. This is again not acceptable of such a prophet who has been so pure throughout this entire chapter, throughout the entire incident, who loves his father, who respects his father. And clearly in the Quran, when they meet, he gives them the highest of respect. He gives them high thrones and high seats. And this is when they all prostrate. Prostrate not doing sajda. It seems to be the method of bowing down or greeting one another that they've done now to Yusuf. وَقَالَ يَا أَبَتِي How beautiful. Now Yusuf turns to his father and he says, Oh my father, هَذَا تَأْوِيلُ الرُّؤْيَا This is the interpretation of that dream. That dream that happened when I was seven or nine years of age. Now this is the interpretation of that dream. قَدْ جَعَلَهَا رَبِّي حَقًّا My Lord has made it truthful. وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي and my Lord has been so kind to me. Would we say this about Allah when, if we have gone through all these difficulties, trials and tribulations? Yusuf said, وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي إِذْ أَخْرَجَنِي مِنَ السِّجِنْ Allah was kind to me when He removed me from prison. Notice, He doesn't say when Allah, He doesn't talk about when Allah put Him in prison. He doesn't talk about when Allah put Him in the well. No, no, He doesn't talk about that. He talks about the blessings of Allah. That when Allah took me out of prison, how kind He was to me. وَجَاءَ بِكُمْ مِنَ الْبَدْوِ And Allah has brought you from the deserts to me. مِنْ بَعْدِ أَنْ نَزَغَ الشَّيْطَانُ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ إِخْوَتِي How beautiful Yusuf says that after shaytan caused this disturbance between me and my brothers. He doesn't blame the brothers. He doesn't say because of my brothers and what they did. No, no. He doesn't talk about the negative aspects. He looks at the positives. And he looks at how Allah has been so kind to him after shaitan planted seeds of dissension between him and his brothers, how Allah has brought them all forth and brought them together. Inna Rabbi latifun lima yasha. My Lord is so kind to those whom he wishes. Innahu huwa al-alimul hakim. He is the all-knowing and he is the all-wise. Yusuf ends with a prayer. He says, Rabbi qad ataytani min al-mulk. O oh my Lord, you have given me the kingdom. وَعَلَّمْتَنِي مِنْ تَأْوِيلِ الْأَحَادِيثِ You've taught me the interpretation of events and of dreams. فَاطِرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ You are the originator of the heavens and of the earth. أَنْتَ وَلِيِّ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ You are my guardian. Who else can I rely on? Everything that happened, you were the only door that was open to me. You were the only hand that was stretched and you never let me down. You looked after me in the pits. 
He looked after me when I was being sold in the marketplace, in the palace, in the room, in the prison. And now you've brought all my family together. And now we've forgiven one another. They have sought forgiveness. And once again, I am reunited with my beloved parents. This brings our series for this Shah Ramadan to an end. I thank you for bearing patience and for listening, listening attentively to the discourse that we've had on this most beautiful chapter in the Quran of Surah Yusuf. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our a'mal and our actions in this holy month that is coming to an end now. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq, to give us the blessings and the barakah that we should continue to learn from the Holy Quran and inshallah meet one another again in the future to discuss other surah and other chapters of the Holy Quran, understand different verses, different anecdotes and different stories from this most beautiful book and most importantly that he gives us the ability to implement it in our daily lives. I thank you for paying attention and for listening through this series and with that I greet you. Wassalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.